Peter Elides with you. This is Stock Market Cycles Update for the week ending Friday, September 3rd, 2021, being recorded on Saturday, September 4th. This could end up being one of the more important updates we have ever done. We have not done a YouTube update for a couple of months now, so we're probably going to share this with those of you that view us on YouTube only. Remember that we have a subscriber list, loyal subscribers that watch these videos every single day. I think they find great value in them, and you are welcome, those of you that are not subscribers that are watching on YouTube, to get a free trial. If you go to our website at stockmarketcycles.com, you get a free trial of both our software, which is usable with TradeStation, and our daily videos. Uh, we'll have more information on that underneath the video uh, on YouTube. And for you regular subscribers, again, I repeat, this may end up being one of the more important updates we've done this year, certainly, and perhaps ever. So settle back in an easy chair, turn your volume up, and let's get to work here. Okay. This is the Schiller P.E. ratio. I don't have much faith in P.E. ratios. They're certainly not usable for market timing. But they give you a long-term perspective on the market as to where you stand or where the market stands valuation-wise, okay? And as you can see from this chart, I think it's probably up to date through at least a month ago and perhaps later than that. This is where we stand with the Schiller P.E. ratio. It's an adjusted P.E. ratio. You can look up the definition of it online. We, the only time we have ever been higher is in the year 2000, okay? So this is where we stand now. The only reason I bring this up is overvalued, way overvalued markets, as is this one that we are in now, are important only because... They give you perspective as to what your downside risk is. It doesn't help you with market timing. This is not telling you that we're at a market top here just by looking at this chart. But it does give you perspective in terms of what the downside risk is. And the downside risk here is great. This is 1929 back here, Black Tuesday. And as you can see, we had this incredible move down into 1932. The Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 90%. Yes, 90%, okay? So when you get into this upper layer with the, the, the Schiller P.E. ratios, your downside risk is great. Again, no help with timing. Doesn't say we're at a top now, but it does show you the downside risk is immense from here. Okay, I wanted to start out with that. We're going to quickly look at some projections, but I have more important things to talk about, especially now that we are approaching Labor Day in the next couple of days. And Labor Day is very, very important in very overvalued markets. Okay, let's take a look at some of our projections. This is the NASDAQ 100 future, symbol NQ. And this is a continuation chart, and it's a Globex chart. It includes overnight trading. You can see the offset right here is rounded off 14 and 16, okay? That's actually 1396 and 1595, and we do exact offsets. The software does. But let's call it a 1416 offset. And it's given us an upside projection, which we have met. Let's go out to the next longer one. Okay, here is an upside projection we have not met. It calls for 15,684 rounded off to 15,733 rounded off on the NDX. Let's go to the next longer one. This one was just at the very end of the day on Friday, validated. Or So we have a valid projection up to between 15,702 to 15,767 rounded off. Okay, and the Okay, here's a fun projection because a subscriber called this to our attention. We had been looking at the 27-minute uh, charts daytime only and hadn't looked at this one in quite a while. 
but he reminded us several days ago that we had this projection outstanding on the S&P calling for at least 45.47.25 to 45.61.46. We just moved into the projection window on Friday, okay? That was early in the morning on Friday. We got to a high of 45.49.50 inside the window. Here's one that was given late in the day on Friday, and quickly it's 45.42 to 45.51, lower than the one we just showed you. But that that was a called into question late in the day. If we had gone down just a little bit more, it would have invalidated this upside projection. Anyway, those are where the projections stand. That's not what is important here. I want to spend the rest of this update talking to you about Labor Day and overvalued markets, usually overvalued markets, but sometimes just the Labor Day holiday itself. And let's start out by going to a Dow chart. First, let's look at the two most overvalued markets previous to where we are right now. And one can argue now, uh, if you go and take a look at the Husband Econometrics page, which I have pointed out to you before, he does great work with valuation and shows that, according to his valuation technique, this is the most overvalued market in history. Yes, greater than 2000 and greater than 1929. But let's take a look at those two years, okay? Okay, here's 1929, and here's the top in 29. Let's take a closer look at that. The date, September 3rd, 1929. You know when Labor Day was in 1929? Well, it just happened to have been September 1st, 1929. Excuse me, September 2nd of 1929. That was a Monday of Labor Day. The very next day, the Dow Jones Industrial Average closed at 381.17. Over the next Fibonacci 55 trading days into this bottom in November, the Dow declined 47.9% in 55 trading days. You can see it very clearly here how that happened. The decline started pretty easily for the first week or two. Then it picked up an acceleration, one quick rally, and then boom, this was called the crash in 1929. That happened in late October. We had a little rally, or actually that was a pretty big rally for a day or two, and then into the low on November 13th, 55 trading days, 55 Fibonacci trading days later. So that's what happened the day after Labor Day in 1929. Let's go to the year 2000, which one could argue is the second most overvalued market in history prior to the current one. Okay, now most of you know that the market tops in 2000 came in January for the Dow and for the S&P and the over-the-counter composite in March. But most people do not know that going into September of that year, we rallied back very nicely and everyone thought that was the end of the decline. This is September 6th right here. So the top in 2000 after the January-March top the fall top in 2000 came the S&P the day before Labor Day on the Dow Jones Industrial Average two days after Labor Day. I'm reading notes here, so excuse me if I look down because I took some copious notes in terms of what these days and percentages and numbers were. On the Dow Jones Industrial Average, there was one close two-tenths of a percent higher than this Labor Day close. And that occurred almost a year later on May 21st of 01. That was one day, two-tenths of a percent higher. But after this close in 2000, there was not a higher close over the next six years on the Dow. That's how important that top was. Okay, so that takes care of 1929 and 2000. Um, and both of those highs occurred... As I said, in March and January of 2000 were the ultimate highs in the, in the Dow and the S&P, but we came pretty darn close in September of that year to getting back up towards those highs. And it's what happened after that that's important. Okay, 
Let's take a look at another year where the market was very overvalued and things did not go so well. Here's 2007 and 2008. As you know, most of you know, that the market topped in October of 07. There was actually a double top in many entities from July and October. But again, most people don't know that if you go to the next year, 2008, and go into Labor Day of the next year. Okay, Labor Day in 2008 was Monday, September 1st. That was in between these two bars here. So this is the bar after Labor Day, and this is the Dow Industrials, okay? It closed at 11,517, rounded off. The next day, a little bit higher, closed at 11,533. And this is what happened after that a massacre, okay? So two days after Labor Day was the Dow high and it, a 43.2% decline over the next six months into this March bottom. That was the Dow. The S&P closed one day after Labor Day at a, at a high close for the next two years and four months and that led to a 47% decline in the next six plus months on the S&P, okay? So that's what happened in 2008 after Labor Day. Let's do another couple of quickies. Okay, this is 1939. I don't think too many of you remember that year. And as a matter of fact, this is even, well, I was going to say it's even before I was born. It isn't. I was born May 26, 1939, so I was a little tyke sitting in my crib or lying in my crib as this happened. One week after Labor Day in 1939, that's on this date right here, September 12th of 39, that was the highest close for the next five plus years in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And it led to, boom, into the 42 low, a 40.4% decline. This is Labor Day right here, folks, right back here, okay? How about going back to 1932? Because there was an important bottom in 32, off the 29 high. Here's the huge decline. Here's the 29 high right at Labor Day. And here's the 32 bottom in July of that year. But take a look at what happened. This is early September of 1932, two days after Labor Day that year, and this is after the market had reached a very important bottom. Two days after Labor Day, there was a Dow closing high that led to a 37% decline in the next approximately five months. 37%, I know it looks relatively small here, this is a big percentage decline that began a week after Labor Day in 1932 after the bottom, bottom had already been made. And speaking of the bottom, let's take a look inside this decline from 1929 to 1932. Let's go to Labor Day in 1930. September 10th, 1930. One week and two days after Labor Day. The Dow closed at a high that was not seen for the next 20 years and four months. That's correct. This is a high a week after Labor Day in 1930 that held for the next 20 plus years and the decline, even after the major top had been seen in 29, the decline from here, from this one week after Labor Day top was down 83.2% to the July low in 1932, okay? So that's what's happening. That's what has happened around Labor Day. You, you might say, well, that's just a coincidence. Um, I think there are too many of them to call it a coincidence. And they occurred, again, two of the most overvalued markets prior to the one we're in now, which were obviously 1929 and the year 2000. I showed you what happened after those labor days in those two years. So I wanted to call all of this to your attention because I believe that we are set up now in terms of all the projections that I look at 
a lot of the technicals that I look at, the sentiment that we see out there in terms of so many things we are set up for that kind of top, the kind of top that I showed you has occurred around Labor Day over the past almost 100 years or so. So, very important message. Again, those of you that are interested in getting free trial to our software and our daily market updates, I encourage you to go to our website, stockmarketcycles.com. We'll have a link for that underneath the video on YouTube. For our subscribers, I hope you enjoyed this update. Have yourselves a great Labor Day weekend. We'll talk to you again on Tuesday.